So one of these candles is running off a nickel metal hydride battery and the other one a supercapacitor. Which is which? Can we take a project like this, the candle project, take out a nickel metal hydride battery and just put in a supercapacitor? Will it work? Well, yes. The difficulty isn't discharging. The difficulty is how do you charge this thing using the QX5252? We've done some work on this in the past and I think we've solved most of the problems. Let's get into it. This video is so important that I've written a script so I don't make any mistakes or inadvertently leave out a crucial detail, such as the value of a particular capacitor or resistor. So the project dates back to 2016, and that's when I started making these ridiculous candles. We've pretty much reached peak candle in terms of the programming, the fact that we get that sort of 3D flicker, um, which we've seen on this channel before. I've actually added to it since then, so now the candle also sputters at the right time. Well, at any time, at some random time. So that's pretty, well, that's pretty nice as well. The last little thing which we have seen on this channel before is can we replace the nickel metal hydride battery with a supercapacitor? These little guys are worth about the same. They're 120 farad in, um, in their capacitance and it seems like that they can do some amazing things. Uh, for instance, we have seen where we've been able to run one of these candles, if you like, these fake candles overnight or even into the, uh, the next day. I'll, I'll link that video up. This one actually here, uh, which you can see, has been going for three days. So discharging from the, uh, from the supercapacitor is not a problem. The Paduk is running so slowly, I think it's at 50 kilohertz or something like that. Uh, and the code is so efficient that um, that's not a problem. It uses very little juice. The difficulty has been in charging the supercapacitor up, which is 3.8 volts from a uh, solar panel, which only delivers 2 volts via the QX5252. And uh, I've solved that by having a fake battery here um, as a intermediate battery, if you like. So I'll link that video up as well. That's pretty good. So, um, my God, this is an unholy mess of wires. Uh, let me come back when I've made this a little cleaner and we'll look at what's actually happening here. Ugh, that's terrible. All right, that's a little bit tidier uh, and we can see um, hopefully a little bit about what's going on. So all this side is power generation, all this side is power consumption. And ideally, in fact, very soon, uh, probably by the end of this video, hopefully, I'll combine all of those two and maybe pop into one of these for some in-the-field uh, testing. So basically what's happening is that, um, as we've seen in the video before, this is using the QX5252 to charge pump, fill up this thing at 3.8 volts, and it'll just do that during the day. Ideally, during the day, this should not be consuming energy. So what I've done is I've programmed the, uh, the little um, paduk here to when it gets some light, and the studio light should be enough. Yep, there it goes. So that's turned off because it thinks it's daylight. And then when it's nighttime, boom, and it turns back on again. Uh, happy days. So that's basically what's happening in here. And furthermore, I've also solved the idea that this thing sleeps. So here's another one over here sleeping. Look at that. This measures from zero to five milliamps. So if that zero at the, uh, on this side of the decimal point here was a one, that's one milliamp. So we're looking at um, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001, and finally we've got six, I don't know what that is, 0 0.6 of a um, microamp. Yeah, so um, that's very low. And I can wake it up um, by just changing the uh, the conditions here on that pin. So it's woken up and it's flashed. It's gone up to uh, 0.1 of a milliamp and then back to sleep again. So that's pretty nice code. So I'm using that also uh, with this thing here to keep it quiet uh, during the day. Not really necessary. It could actually be doing its thing because it's so efficient, it could be doing its thing, but it just amuses me that it's actually sleeping during the day. And then as soon as we get some um, as soon as we get the the, uh, the darkness appearing, so I'll just do that again. So it's during the day, everything's asleep, all happy days, and then at night time and the candling action starts up. Wow, uh, so good to have this. 
implications are, of course, that uh, whatever low energy project you've got, you might be starting to think maybe I can kick out the uh, the rechargeable battery and uh, and put in some of these amazing 3.8 volt uh, super capacitors. That would be pretty cool. All right, let's go get all this together on the one board, put it in here, and then start testing. So while I'm time lapsing this because we've seen a lot of this before, there are a couple of things that are different. The LEDs now come into uh, pin four and six and seven because pin five is what's used by the comparator to, uh, to decide whether or not there's light. Uh, and so uh, in the code, um, yeah, I've had to change all of, uh, all of that. I've also in the code changed the, uh, the high frequency clock to the low frequency clock, which uh, yeah, I'm still experimenting with, but it seems okay. Also, uh, just in the dying light of a day, I uh, put the prototype on the balcony and uh, tested a few of the voltages. And of course, um, yeah, even in a, um, a very low light situation uh, down here in Tasmania, uh, pretty much uh, uh, approaching winter now, uh, still able to get the 3.8 uh, and even up to four volts into the super cap during the day. And then of course it discharges during the night. So that's fine as well. I'll put all the code and um, I'll also put the wiring uh, diagram, the circuit diagram. In fact, um, added a little bit to that as well. Added an extra diode uh, to bring the uh, voltage down on the fake battery, which is good. And uh, the other thing I did was um, put in uh, a voltage divider from the solar panel to uh, the uh, to pin five, which is how the comparator works. Okay, uh, that looks about complete. Uh, let's go and have a look at in action. So what are we actually looking at here? Well, maybe for some projects now, it's possible to replace batteries with supercapacitors. They're roughly the same price at the moment. There's a massive increase in the recharge cycles, I think, Nickel metal hydride's about 3,000 cycles, whereas super caps are around the one, perhaps even 200,000 cycles. There's a much reduced environmental footprint because of the uh, chemicals or lack of chemicals involved. They're much lighter, which could be very useful for some projects. They're much faster to recharge, which again would be very useful for some projects. If you're interested, have a look at the blog and have a look at the code. In fact, Share it if you can as much as possible, because um, I think this has some real possibilities. But the more critical feedback that I get on this, uh, then I think that's the better for the future of this project and others like it. So what's next? Well, I'm looking at the moment at uh, IoT projects and super caps. So watch this space for that. In the meantime, that's the circuit working for this week, and we'll see you next time.